Hello, this is Ward Bryson coming to you from health education at the Athens City County Health Department. You are listening to episode four of our Healthy Holidays podcast series, where I meet with other folks serving in our community and share healthy plant-based recipes for your table during the holidays. Today, I am joined by my fellow service member, Mia McAllister. Mia, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, my name's Mia. Um, I also serve at Comcore. I serve for Sojourner's Care Network, um, specifically the Resiliency Center, which is located in Athens, uh, 5 North Schaefer Street, if you ever want to drop by. It is a drop-in center for at-risk youth. Um, and my position is the program coordinator, which basically just means I come up with the programs for the youth who come into our center to participate in. Um, it's basically a safe space for um, anyone in our age range, which is 14 to 21, um, to come in and participate in, we have like a book club, we have tutoring in a variety of subjects, um, we actually have our own vegan cooking program, um, that Ward has come to, it's super fun, we make a lot of like affordable, uh, healthy meals, um, and our hours are 12 to 7, and it also is just a community space, we have like hot showers, um, laundry services, free Wi-Fi, food and so pantry. those are accessible to people outside of the usual age range? Yes. Anybody in the community can come and utilize those services, but the programs are designated for our at-risk youth. Okay. I will say that I have gone to Sojourners a number of times, both as a service member and as a community member, um, to help out or just to partake in whatever workshop is going on, and it is a great resource, great place to go. Um, I highly recommend um, so today is our cauliflower episode, which I say with a lot of gusto, but I recognize it may not sound that exciting. Um, certainly against the likes of squash and mushrooms and pumpkin, cauliflower is a little bit more bland, a little bit more in the background. I know when I texted Mia, hey Mia, we're doing cauliflower, <laughs> and they said, what are we going to do with cauliflower? What were you thinking, Mia, when, when I first introduced that to you? My first thought is... When I eat cauliflower as a vegetarian, uh, it's usually as like a meat replacement. So like cauliflower wings instead of chicken wings, um, something that you add a lot of flavor to because cauliflower is typically bland was sort of where my brain went. Okay. And you were half right because one of our recipes, we did do a little cauliflower roast and that was very much about getting some like crisp on there, getting some flavor on there. And, and it really is... Um, it could be a main if you like plated it on some rice or something, but I, I would again serve it as a side, but it, it kind of is that savory, you know, gap that meat can often fill. Um, and then our other one though, I think plays into the blandness that cauliflower brings to the table. Yeah, it leans into it. Really leans into it. It is a, a cauliflower mashed potato, which is very interesting to me um, because, you know, it replaces kind of that starchiness of the potato and... It's good. I I was really <laughs> impressed. Like some of these recipes, I even I am I do not normally eat plant based at all. Um, but going into these, I've liked everything we've made so far. But I've really liked these potatoes. <laughs> I would honestly maybe make them at home because it's kind of it's quicker than mashed potatoes are. It takes a mm-hmm. while to make mashed potatoes, so I would recommend. Yeah, I um, am uh, the weirdo who says that mashed potatoes are my favorite food. Um, so you had. Pretty high standards for me, but they were very good. I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, the consistency was what I was the most worried about, and it like was very eerily similar. It was spot on. It was shocking. Now it is it is like a creamy mashed potato. It's yeah. not if you like the skins in and the chunky mashed potatoes. It's not going to replace that. If you do like the the very much pureed creamy mashed potatoes, um, and you want it to have that texture to it, it is very much that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's go over the recipes real quick. Um, why don't we start with our roast? So our roast is it's kind of um, a spicy, kind of a little zesty roast. Um, ingredients are one medium head cauliflower, about two pounds. Um, I got, I thought, I thought it was a large head, but you know, <laughs> up to you. Um, one fourth cup of extra virgin olive oil, two large garlic cloves. Um, we probably did maybe about three garlic cloves actually, but it's up to you on your preference for garlic. Uh, one teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Again, I think we went a little bit heavier on that. Um, kosher salt, enough to get a, get a, a little thin coating on every every um, bit of cauliflower. I'd say on your sheet pan. Um, freshly ground black, black bleh, sorry, freshly ground black pepper, and that's just um, to taste. We didn't do too much of that. 
two tablespoons of golden raisins. These are very optional. I know raisins can be divisive. We tried it with the golden raisins, and I thought it added a little bit of something, but it definitely wasn't necessary. Mia? I was sort of um, after a spice uh, aspect, so I, uh, just for my own preference, didn't really lean into the raisin, okay. but um, that's because I, I liked my spicy and my sweet separate. Okay, okay. But it was it was still good, just not necessary. Um, and then one tablespoon of red or white wine vinegar. And finally, some more salt for serving. Um, the ingredients, or the instructions on both these recipes are very straightforward, really. There's not a lot of steps. Uh, so for this recipe, you're going to heat the oven to 425 degrees Fahrenheit. You're going to trim the stem of the cauliflower, then stand it up on the cutting board. Slice it lengthwise into half-inch slabs, and most of these did not hold together like slabs, especially on the ends of your cauliflower. But as you get more toward the middle, they kind of do a little bit more. Um, it doesn't really matter if they break apart, so don't worry about that. Um, if there's like teeny little tiny bits, you can just forget those. Um, and once you have them all slabbed up, you can have the biggest pieces, so they're not a giant like slab into more something like a little bit smaller than a burger. And you cut any parts of the stem into bite-sized pieces. Then you toss the slabs and the smaller pieces um, on a sheet pan with the oil, garlic, um, and red pepper flakes. We actually just pre-mixed our oil, garlic, and red pepper into like one little thing and then kind of tossed it all together. Um, but you can apply that any way you like. Um, and then you can season it, like we said, like a thin coating of, of salt on everything and of black pepper as well to your taste. Um, if it's crowded, you might want to get another pan. We didn't have that issue at mm -hmm. all, I don't think. Um, and when we had the, the little tiny bits, we actually just set those aside for our later recipe where we were just pureeing it into a mashed, mashed potato, mashed cauliflower. Um, now, once you've done that, you roast that for 15 to 20 minutes. And then you take it out to flip. Uh, I think we left ours in for, I think, just exactly 15. Um, we could have gone a little bit longer. You flip it. You put it in for another um, 12 to 15 minutes. We went a little bit longer because we had gone a little bit shorter the first time around. Um, and what your final result should be is like a very golden brown, kind of crispy and tender cauliflower. Um, we remove that from the pan and you transfer it to a serving plate. Then you can sprinkle over the raisins um, and, just before serving, drizzle over your vinegar, which gives it kind of a little bit of a tangy flavor. Likewise with the raisins, I know vinegar can be a little bit divisive. Um, my partner actually won't eat anything that has touched vinegar, so you can leave that out if you like. It tastes just as good without it. Um, as for our other recipe, this one is even more straightforward, I think, than the roast. Really, all you do is you take a head of cauliflower, um, break it up into florets. You should get about six to seven cups of them. Um, and then you bring a large pot of water to a boil. Once it's at a boil, add all of your cauliflower to it, boil it for about 10 minutes. Once you're done, your cauliflower should be very tender. Um, you wanna drain the water off that. We probably could have drained it a little bit more and you do wanna reserve a fourth cup of the cooking liquid, okay? We did not end up using it, but again, we probably should have drained more water off of our cauliflower. So just Keep it just in case. Um, once you have the cauliflower kind of drained a little bit, you can add it to a food processor. I do not have a food processor on hand. I will for the, our next episode, though. <laughs> but this time we used um, the same immersion blender we used during the pumpkin episode, and we, we kind of just immersion blended our, uh, our cauliflower down. And that worked pretty well after some mashing, too, like mm -hmm. you would normal mashed potatoes. Um, and what that does is it really does break it down to get kind of that same consistency as the potato. Uh, you can add your oil. We did use the um, tablespoon of oil, and that, that got it to a good consistency as well. But again, we didn't use our, our um, reserved liquid, but you may need to. So keep it, keep it on hand. Uh, we also then season with salt and pepper. And in our case, we added a little bit of garlic powder, um, just because we like some garlic leaf potatoes. Uh, totally optional, and you can flavor your potatoes however you like. Um, but I think the garlic and the olive oil and the... Um, the slight cauliflower flavor you still get really worked well together. Yeah, it was it was almost like it was like a mashed potato dish that was supposed to taste like cauliflower. Like I never would have guessed that you would have gotten that consistency. Um, but like you could definitely taste it in a good way. Yes. I don't I don't know why, but it worked. <laughs> it really worked. All right. So comparing both recipes, Mia, which was your favorite? 
I think I'm partial to the mashed potatoes. Um, they were just like really surprising. Like I, I feel like the roasted cauliflower was like what I expected, even though it was good. But the mashed potatoes were so surprisingly good that I would have to pick those. I agree. Um, compared to our, our pumpkin episode, which you were not present for, so this is absolutely useless to you. But hopefully <laughs> our listeners can glean something from this. Very much the mashed potatoes and the pumpkin pie from that episode hit the very same. Is, is that I was expecting it to be like, you know, kind of like a replacement that is okay, but whatever. But like the pumpkin pie was indistinguishable from pumpkin pie. This is almost indistinguishable from mashed potatoes. <laughs> and both were very, very good. Um, I am curious, Mia, what is your skill level in the kitchen? Because you seem to know your way around these things. And I know we've been in plant-based cooking workshop together, so you've learned some things there. But how much do you cook at home in the day-to-day? Um, I would say I I do cook for myself and my roommate and I will like meal plan together, which is very fun. Um, I, I would definitely say I'm no expert, but I I do know how to make the things that I like and I can make those well. Um, but I really like trying new things, which is like I might not get it right every single time, but I do like experimenting with cooking, um, which is why I was excited to be on this because I had never tried to make cauliflower mashed potatoes before. Yes, 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 yes. I will say, like, I feel like these recipes are even more accessible than, say, mashed potatoes is. I feel like it's easier to make this recipe than it is to make mashed potatoes. Would you agree? Um, yeah, I would say that there's less ingredients, because I know that, like, mashed potatoes are harder to get a consistency that you would want like that. A lot of people like them to be softer, and that requires a lot more work with potatoes. Um, it was definitely quicker than regular mashed potatoes for sure was a huge like this would be so easy to do if you have like a big family and um yeah it's a 30 minute recipe i would say Mm -hmm. 10 minutes prep 10 minutes boiling and then 10 minutes of just mashing and blending if you have the immersion blender or a food processor as the recipe suggests um normally during these episodes there's a point where i ask my guests um if there was any, any like troubles that we ran into, we had a lot during the pumpkin episode, actually. But during this episode, I don't think we ran into anything that was that difficult. No, I wouldn't say so. Um, I, I would say, like, like you touched on earlier, the cauliflower cutting it into slabs at the beginning, um, they crumbled. And I thought, oh, no, this isn't going to work. But then it did once we got closer to the yes. center. Yes, yes. It was, that was a scary moment. I will say also just when you're cutting anything like broccoli or cauliflower, it's got all the little bits. We, we, I will have to sweep after this. So <laughs> there may be a little bit of, of cleaning involved. But um, actually assembling the meal, is, this is the easiest episode we've done yet. Um, I Unparalleled for sure. Would you bring these recipes home for the holidays? Oh, yeah. I feel like um, my, my stepmom is also a vegetarian. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's always looking for more um, recipes that are like, fun that aren't just like put a slab of tofu on something um and I feel like the roasted cauliflower would go over very well with like our meat eaters too as a side so I feel like that that definitely and like um my little sister actually can't have potatoes so uh this is a way for her to experience mashed potatoes and I'm very excited to make her do it (laughs) that's amazing I'm so glad to have brought this to you thank you Thank you, Mia, for coming today. We've been really lucky to have you and your talent in the kitchen. (laughs) Thank you for having me. It was very fun to get to make something new and have free food. Yes, yes. Um, So to our viewers, remember, Sojourners uh, Resiliency Center is open... 12 to 7, Monday through Friday. And that is for people of the ages... 14 to 21 if you'd like to join our programs, but if you'd like to come in for our services, such as the food pantry, hot shower, Wi-Fi, and laundry, anybody is welcome. All right. We hope you have a healthy holidays and have a good one. Bye. A good one.